Hey stampers, Rachel here from RachelTheStamper.com. Today I'm going to show you how to make this very pretty card. This uses some really fun items. We're using the largest pennant from the Nested Essentials dies. Then we also have sketched plaid and we use that for this piece here. And then also I did this on the inside, on the edge. I just thought that was really fun. Kind of in place of DSP, but if you have extra DSP, you could use that instead, or both. And then we're also using Softly Said. This is in the online exclusives. So I did the thinking of you, but the thank you, I am 90% sure, the thank you would also fit and the you are loved. Okay, so you could use either of those. And we're using Misty Moonlight. So Misty Moonlight is the paper and the ink here. We did that with this, the sketch plaid and then the um, wood paper. Oh goodness, I can't think what that is called. It is, I'm sorry, I apologize. It is the wood um, pattern DSP that we have. It's an online exclusive, I believe. It's a really nice paper. It has a lot of different versatile pieces. Then I just used a piece of Misty Moonlight, so I'll show you how we did that part. So to get started, we have our base, so Misty Moonlight. We have this for the inside panel. And we're gonna go ahead and stamp our sentiment first onto this piece, and then we will get our plaid pieces. So this is our DSP. I just used the uh, flip side of both of these, okay? So this one um, is one and a half inches by four, and then the other piece you're gonna need is two and a half inches by four. And then this is just an inch. It doesn't need to be an inch because we are gonna tear it, but just to get started. So to begin, we're gonna go ahead and grab our sentiment. And I think about it, I think the thank you is just a little too big for that. So you could either use you or love, you could use a different die if you wanted to, but we're gonna do the thinking of you. And it is a little bit tight of a fit, but it does fit good enough that it's not a problem. And we're going to use Misty Moonlight for that. Okay. And then I'll show you how we're gonna do the plaid portion. So just kind of center this. We're gonna cut this with our die cut. And the way this die, or I'm sorry, this stamp is, it does have more of that watercolor. So there's parts that are lighter and darker. That's normal. I'm gonna die cut this in a minute, but we're gonna do the other portion first. So I usually do this because it's easier to do it in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line, I'm sorry, I'm going to ink up my stamp and then I'm going to do my inside panel first. So what I usually do is I just grab a piece of scrap paper and I'm going to line this up and I kind of want it to be right on the edge, but once you decide where you're going to go, you have to commit and then you just press, keep your fingers clean. And we're gonna lift this up and over. So there's that piece. And then we have our other piece here. So I'm gonna just ink this up again. And you don't really need to do the whole thing. Now my um, die, if you can see this, is definitely a little bit, or my stamp I should say, off. You notice it's not lined up. If you ever experience that with your stamps when you get them or something's not lined up, please make sure you either contact me if I am your demonstrator, contact your demonstrator, or if you are demo, a demonstrator yourself, contact demo support because they will get you a new one. So there's our piece here. We're not going to put our ink away yet because we are going to um, use that for our torn edge. Oh, I put this down on my stamp, which I shouldn't have done. That wasn't my smartest move. And then all you're going to do is just spritz this. I usually spritz it with stamp and mist and wipe it off with a uh, microfiber towel, but you can also um, clean it in the sink if you want to instead. So then we're going to just take our piece and we're going to just tear. It doesn't need to be perfect. Doesn't really matter how much. I know sometimes people are like, well, what, how, what exactly did you tear? It's not that precise. Then we're gonna take our ink pad and we're gonna just swipe. So you can see what it looks like before and after. You can just swipe that torn edge in the ink, just like so, so you have some color on the edge. If you want, you can also do the top and the sides like we normally do with the dipping, but you don't have to, that's just your choice. All right, and then let me just run this through the die cut machine.
And the nested essentials dies are really versatile. They do cut the inside and the outside, so it's a double stitching. So this is just a negative, whereas sometimes you'll get them where it is, it'll cut it inside and an outside. This one is just double stitched, which I think is really pretty. It adds a lot to it. All right, so now all we need to do is assemble, and I'm gonna just put this cover on here really quickly so my card doesn't stick. Now, one of the things about this particular card is when you're lining these up, I cut these pieces so they would be a little bit larger. That way you kind of have like a little bit of forgiving space in between. And they are going top to bottom, as you can see. Okay, so this goes all the way top to bottom. We only have the side gap. And I know sometimes people are a little bit thrown off by that, but just do the best you can. It doesn't have to be perfect. And if you have to, you can always trim if you need. So I'm gonna do the larger piece first. And again, I'm just leaving a little gap on the side, about an eighth of an inch. And looks good. And then this one is going to just meet. And it probably needs to overlap just a hair. And then we'll cover that up with that center piece. I always would rather have a little bit more than a little bit less, just in case your gapping isn't quite the same. Oops, just a smidge. All right, and then we're gonna line this this way. So I have my torn edge that way. You can do it either way. And this is just really covering the seam. Okay, so just press that. And then what we're gonna do is, yep, so I did it correctly. This is all just a little extra. So I'm gonna trim this off, but I'm not gonna do it quite yet. Okay, for this piece, what I did is I have um, linen thread. Now, everybody knows linen thread is absolutely amazing, but the other thing is sometimes linen thread can be just a little bit bulky. So what I did with this one is I actually cut it, but I also took it apart. So linen thread is usually about two pieces of string that's tied together. Is it two? Maybe it's three. Nope, it's three, three pieces. So the cool part is if you're making a lot of these and you get one long piece, you really can do three cards, which is I think what we probably did for card club. I'm a little bit behind this month because school started and everything is just extra busy at this time. If you like that it's not quite as thin as this, you could use two strands, but we're gonna just use one. If you use the full piece of linen thread, it just gets a little bit bulky. That's the only thing. So only thing I did was, well, you know what? I think maybe I did do two now that I'm looking at it because it does look a little, little bit more body when I'm looking at my sample. So we're going to use these and you're just kind of un, unweaving them. We're going to use this and we're going to wrap it around and we want to tie in the front. So we're going to keep this piece. We're going to go around just enough to tie in the front with a little faux knot. You don't want to go so tight that it pulls, but you also don't want to go so loose that it wiggles. So it's kind of a fine line. And if this isn't your thing, you can also just do a little faux knot. The other thing you can do as well, which kind of helps with the knot tying. Holy moly. Sorry. Let me, I'm going to try this one more time because I'm being distracted by something. It's pouring and we haven't had rain here in a long time. It's been very drought like in the uh, mid Atlantic. Okay. So just to go back one second, if you put a little piece of washi, what it kind of does is help anchor. And I should have started with that, but the rain threw me off. So you're going to tie and then just make your little knot. Okay. And if you need to, because this one is a little bit long, I kind of just trimmed up just the edge of it because I didn't want it overpowering the sentiment. So I'm going to just take just a little bit off just like that. And then what I did is I put some dimensionals on the back of this. So let me just grab some big dimensionals and 
You can also use the dimensionals to hold your string in place if you're using very <laughs> vintage is a good way to say it, washi tape, because this is some pretty, pretty old washi tape that I'm using. It doesn't have the sticky like it used to. So you're gonna just pop that on the front, just like so. Okay. And then we're gonna put a little bit of glue on our inside panel. So this is again, uh, basic white, four by five and a quarter. And I tried it on the inside. I liked it better on the outside. Okay, there's that. I'm gonna fold this over, give it a crease. And then one final thing, because I thought it was great, but also I felt like it just needed just a little something. So I added, let me make sure I tell you the correct name of these. These are the 20, 24, 26 in color gems. And you see we mostly went with pink here, but you could also use purple because I don't really think once it's on there, you wouldn't notice. You'd also use, so pink would be uh, pretty in pink. I think that's our color that came back. Is that right? Yep, pretty in pink. The lightest one is Summer Splash, the lightest blue. Um, you also have Shy Shamrock. The darker purplish is Petunia Pop, and then this is Peach Pie. So I kind of just spread them like in an area of three because three is a number that is pleasing to the eye, and as long as they're in a triangle, that apparently makes them more attractive to look at. Who knew? Isn't that something? Learn something new every day. So that is our finished card, and that's it. Which one do you like better? I think the Pretty in Pink is definitely a little bit nicer than the Summer Splash, but since it has all those colors in it, it's pretty nice regardless just because it kind of ties them all together. If you'd like to get any of these supplies and more, you can head to my online store. All of the measurements and everything will be attached to the blog post and all of the products used are in the description here below. If you haven't already, I would love for you to like, subscribe, and follow. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great day.